What's up Taurus? It's me, the Sunlight Oracle, and I have your reading for the dates of September 1st through the 15th, 2021. Thank you for selecting this video of all the Taurus videos you could have selected. I appreciate it. Please like, subscribe, and share with a friend. And if you really like spiritual development and the sort of reading that I am going to do here today, please check out my Patreon. We get super weird over there as well. Okay, nice. So many people have gotten this orientation, the five of rods in reverse. It's telling me that you are tired of conflict. You are tired <laughs> of fending for yourself because it feels like whatever conflict you're in right now, it could be very well with more than one person. You know, I often see this as like a work environment, teamwork environment. You're like, you know what? This isn't really worth it because I'm not being heard anyway. <laughs> It feels like I see you, Taurus, as the, the voice of reason, but also like you're so reasonable that you're able to see that using your voice of reason, your logic and rationale will not be valued in this certain circumstance. So why, why expend this energy, right? But it's opposed by the Ace of Swords, which tells me that you do have a very effective and fresh new way of solving this problem, solving this conflict. You're just a little bit apprehensive of whether or not to share it. When I see the Ace of Swords, it's like the purest form of the intellect, right? And I feel that, again, intellect is directly connected with logic and rationale. So you might be dealing with people who are illogical and irrational, but you um, are also being invited to kind of bring in a little bit more of your own intuition into this problem solving as well. If, and I think that you know, eventually you are gonna have to deal with it. You are, you can't be avoidant forever. If you are willing to invite more of your intuition, your creative mind, your, uh, your ability to suspend your disbelief, if you can bring that to the table along with logic and rationale, Taurus, then I think you're gonna be able to solve this problem because you're kind of getting the trifecta here. You, you're here to ground everyone, right? Your archetype is here to be of the earth, of security, uh, material concerns, but there's always room for growth in all the archetypes to balance themselves like entirely. This little argument or big argument or conflict is a test for you to be a more well-rounded problem solver. In your conscious mind, we get the six of cups reversed. And in your subconscious or conscious or unconscious, we get the empress. So I'm going to start with the conscious, which is really just piggybacking off of this conflict that we're discussing. It tells me that you think your attempts at being a leader or a teacher are kind of futile, that they're falling on Death, deaf ears. You're like, why, why spend the energy when I'm not being respected? But when I look at your subconscious and your unconscious, your empress energy is actually reversed, which tells me that your conscious mind shouldn't be trusted. And again, thinking that you're worthless or not a good teacher or leader, or um, you can't set by example, because I think you are actually a prime example to be setting for these people or this person right now. Check it out again, five of rods reversed. It's like in your subconscious and unconscious, there's some mistrust that's going on with yourself. And again, I think it's because you're lacking a bit of that intuition, a bit of that fire, a bit of that inner knowing and trust within the self. So while you're an excellent teacher and an excellent role model, you could be an even more excellent teacher and a more excellent role model if only you would trust yourself and have a little bit more fun and leave the confines of the rigid logic that you cling to. That's what's off. It's like you need a bit more of this empress energy, which is fertility, creativity, maternal, nurturing. You know, if you can start to tap into her a little bit more and make this right side up, then everything's gonna change. You're being called to get in touch with your intuition here, my friend, but not to abandon your logic and rationale because I know that that is in the very fabric of who you are, right? Is that the right word, fabric? In the past, man, a lot of this this week too. In the past, we get strength reversed, which indicates to me that in the past, you've had a point of weakness in listening to the other side of a conflict, to the other side of an argument, and I'd be willing to, to 
share that that's probably like more of the intuitive side <laughs> of someone's mind. It's really easy to write off feelings because feelings aren't facts. That's what I'm hearing for a Taurus. And that's been in the past. And I think, again, this is what this um, reading is here to help you sort of see the other side of, right? Is that um, when you treat people's feelings as facts, you know, you're going to not solve conflict even though you want to solve the conflict and get it done and over with, but you're going to fuel it because it actually invalidates other people's existence. It, it invalidates uh, other people's experience. And as a human race, I think more and more people are learning to value their emotions and their own experience, right? We're healing. In the future, what I get is the Eight of Swords, which is interesting for you. I feel like <laughs> you're really resistant to uh, lean into some of these more like gooey feelings, some of these more creative uh, inclinations that you have, because I do believe you're extremely creative, Taurus, and I think you know that too. You've just always tried to apply that to a very practical uh, activity or a very practical job or a practical, you know what I mean? You, you're afraid of being impractical. And when we fear looking silly or being impractical, uh, we ultimately imprison ourselves into stifling our own self-expression, which again, I think is what's happening here with the inability to kind of speak up and resolve conflict is you don't want to actually express yourself. You don't want to actually express your feelings because it'll make you look weak. That's what I feel. You think it'll make you look weak. Okay. In you, who are you? We get the nine of swords, which now I'm starting to feel some vulnerability from you as this reading's going on. It feels like you're admitting like, you know what? I am having a hard time and like these conflicts, well, I wish they could be served with my comfortable language of logic. Uh, they can't be. And for that reason, I'm uncomfortable and I'm losing sleep at night. That's like a very common tagline with the nine of swords. It's feeling really, you really can have too much intellect. You really can have too much thought. Ask anyone with anxiety. You can have too much logic and thought and intellect in your life to the point where it's paralyzing you. That's what we get with the eight of swords. That's what we're getting with the nine of swords. And again, the pure ace of swords energy is super strong across all of this self doubt that you have all of this unwillingness to be raw, be vulnerable, be silly. Silly is a good thing. Okay. That's sort of like when, if you really honestly look at yourself and say like, I'm feeling a bit rigid in my life. That's, this is precisely why it's because you've been writing off your own intuition and feelings in your environment. We get the nine of pentacles. Now the nine of pentacles is also a sign of logic. I mean, he's a very calculated man. <laughs> he's very wise with his money. He's very patient. And again, calculated. Again, it feels like logic. So it does, it, you are surrounded by people or a very influential person who mimics sort of the behavior that you put out there or you mimic their behavior or whatever, or you're both influencing each other. But it tells me that from the past as well, like it's likely Taurus that if you're still hanging with me, if this reading really is resonating with you, then with the Knight of Pentacles, like this isn't a kind of no nonsense energy that's followed you most of your life, the no nonsense. And I want to encourage you to just like cut out the whole no nonsense thing and really try to embrace the like silliness. And I know I even cringed when I said that I'm like, Ugh. but it's, it's kind of some tough love. I'm hearing that you, may be receptive to at this moment in time. Okay. In your hopes and fears, we get the King of Swords, but it's reversed. So as someone who so much values intellect, who so heavily relies on the suit of swords, at least in this reading, you want to be a master of uh, intellect, of logic, of rationale, and maybe you already are. And what you fear is that by leaning into your intuition, you will somehow negate your devotion to logic and rationale and on the same coin. And I feel like the, the other side of the same coin. And I feel like this is what you're hoping for. It's like precisely that precisely. You want to learn how to balance logic and rationale and intuition equally instead of relying so heavily on one thing. And it's the exact criticism that you have of other people here in this conflict for relying too heavily only on their intuition, only on their feelings, only on their perceptions. You know, 
the it's the pendulum swings the other way Taurus and like it can you can be criticized for the exact same thing on the other side of the spectrum so you can't control what they do you can't control like how they're behaving but you can certainly learn how to kind of loosen up yourself right Ooh. let's look at a resolution or solution though I feel like I've offered you quite a few we get the page of pentacles reverse. I feel like this is take a risk energy. The page is always like indicative of a pretty immature <laughs> child, like uh, that court card, you know, and it's also reversed even more. So I feel like, again, there's a silliness to the page. There's like a frivolous nature to the suit of pentacles when it relates to the page. And I feel like you're just being asked not to take things so damn seriously. Also to kind of regress into like your childlike self. Um, I just did a, a reading for Aries and you know, they're the child of the Zodiac. They've got that down pat. And then the next iteration in the wheel of astrology, the second house, is Taurus, which is you. And it's almost like you're trying to overcompensate for the past life of being an Aries, of being in the childlike archetype space with you know being serious being secure not messing around and it's your duty or your job if you want to look at it as a taurus on planet earth in 2021 to try and balance all of it not to be so heavily married to the archetypes but to kind of uh integrate many parts of them and trust that you've lived past lives where you have learned and experienced being an aries or being an aquarius you know you that all exists within you the universe exists within you. Okay, Taurus, this is the Sunlight Oracle deck. I designed this deck when I got sober. Um, I'm gonna pull a couple cards just to sum up this lovely reading. I really connected with you on this reading, so please, you know, leave me a comment if this resonates. I know it would be kind of awkward to be like, yes, this resonates, because I feel like I kind of dragged you, but it definitely, oh my gosh, you get the exact same cards that Aries got, and I shuffled and everything. Um, yeah, I was just talking about how to integrate more of the Aries archetype into your being. Maybe you're actually even quarreling with an Aries or someone who is childlike, but you're getting the same advice <laughs> in terms of, what did I say? Integrating your intuition a bit more into your problem solving and into your life as a whole. Learning how to trust things that aren't just based in material reality, but maybe in the psychic space of your mind and body. And also inner child, learning how to foster, again, that playfulness and that silliness and the kid that exists within you. Because even though you're very serious, or at least secure and no nonsense is what I'm hearing, there's still a child in you. And that child, whether, whether you realize it or not, in its nature, in your nature was silly was playful, was more connected with the big picture in terms of not taking things so seriously and enjoying life in the short the short time that we spend here. This was a trippy reading. I loved it. I hope it resonated with some of you. I hope, you know, I, I figure I'm attracting at this point people who are on some kind of spiritual quest or development. So if it makes no sense to you and I sound completely off the wall, you know, thanks for listening anyway. <laughs> And if it resonates, like you are totally, everyone's welcome here. And I hope that you come back next week when I do September 16th through the 30th. And um, yeah, we'll take it from there.